Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction film, Perfect Sense. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a man named Michael, who just had a pleasurable muscle wrestling night with a stranger woman beside him. He asks the woman to leave, as he's comfortable sleeping alone. Then we see Susan, an epidemiologist with her sister, throwing rocks to release her frustrations after breaking up with her boyfriend. But after that, she decides to get back to work. The following day, Susan arrives at her work and comes across her colleague, who tells her they need to see a patient. As they reach the room, the patient's wife approaches them and reports that her husband suddenly became moody and then told her he had lost his sense of smell. After that, they interview the patient, who seems not in the mood because of his condition and because he's waiting in the room for several hours. Susan seems the case has nothing to do with her profession, so her colleague explains that several similar cases have been reported in other countries in the last 24 hours. But since there is no infection, nor are they connected with each other, they decide not to worry about it, as it will go away soon. Meanwhile, Michael is busy working in a restaurant while chatting with his colleague, who lectures him that he will soon be in love and miserable. It is going to be his karma for being a womanizer or hormonizer. Subsequently, Susan stands by her window across the restaurant, smoking a cigarette while speaking on her phone. At the same time, Michael gets out of the restaurant to take a break. He notices her and asks for an extra cigarette, even though they do not know each other. Susan tosses the cigarette and then he asks for a lighter, so she annoyingly throws it too. Then Michael starts hitting on her and introduces himself while returning the lighter. But Susan does not seem interested and closes the window afterward without giving him her name. Later, Susan discusses the patient's case with her colleagues and concludes it is not a virus nor contagious, but it spreads quickly. But Susan thinks it could be an environmental, unspecified toxin. They are still uncertain about it, so they conclude that they do not need to panic. After that, it shows how the unknown virus spreads in different countries. The infected begin feeling uncontrollably emotional, as they think of the people they have hurt, even the children, and after that, they lose their sense of smell. Meanwhile, Susan and her colleagues are trying to figure out the cause and discover a cure for the virus. Elsewhere on the street, Michael wanders around and notices a few people, and people begin wearing masks, believing that it's contagious. Due to the virus, Michael's work is highly affected, as the busy restaurant becomes quiet. Later, while Michael smokes outside the restaurant, his colleagues go home and Susan arrives. Michael then invites Susan to the restaurant as they do not have customers recently. He cooks for her and Susan enjoys the food and gets impressed by his delicious dish. While Michael gets some desserts, Susan suddenly gets emotional and cries as she remembers her dad, who had passed away. Michael tries to comfort her with his sorrow-proof muscles, but she tells him not to come closer, thinking maybe he has the same disease. So Michael escorts her home, as she continuously cries. Then Michael decides to stay by her side, as she continues to grieve and cries uncontrollably. While comforting her, Michael suddenly cries as well. So they comfort and embrace each other, wrestling their muscles, but not their smelly tongues. The following day, Michael wakes up feeling better. As he walks to the kitchen, Susan tells him she has lost her sense of smell, and to be worse, she can't even smell his smelly hormones. So Michael tastes and smells a cup of tea, and discovers that his sense of smell is gone too. After that, Susan works hard to look for a cure and tells her colleague she feels pathetic for having a muscle wrestling night with Michael. At the same time, Michael proceeds with his job and eagerly tries to make dishes and recipes with stronger taste for customers who have also lost their sense of smell. It's revealed that since people's senses are connected to their brains, losing the sense of smell can also fade one's memory of something or someone. The next day, Michael is off to work and passes by Susan's apartment. He gets her attention by whistling and asks her to go somewhere. So they have a walk, talk about their career, and listen to a street performer playing the violin. After that, they go to Susan's home, enjoy each other's smell, and perform a smelly workout. Two minutes later, they finish, and Michael opens up that he wants to try to sleep beside her, since he's not used to sleeping with someone. However, due to her trauma from her previous relationship, Susan's mood changes, as she is wary that Michael might be like her ex-boyfriend, so she asks him to leave. Before leaving, Michael hands her his contact card, just in case she wants to see his muscles again soon. They keep themselves busy later. Michael visits his ex-girlfriend at the cemetery, while Susan hangs out with her sister. She disappointingly informs her that her ex-boyfriend has just married and is about to have a child. So her sister asks about Michael, the sorrow-proof muscle guy, and Susan suddenly feels sad that she is uncertain about him anymore. Little by little, the world's situation has been in turmoil, and scientific knowledge still cannot provide a cure for the unknown disease. People have started to seek various explanations for the existence of the virus and accuse multiple institutions. Some believe that the virus is used as a military weapon, a punishment from God, or it's caused by terrorists, and even extraterrestrial conspiracy theories. 
Meanwhile, at Susan's work, her colleague suddenly shouts, gets frustrated, and becomes aggressive. So Susan and her colleague inject him with a sedative to calm him down. Later, the same thing happens to Susan while she walks into the parking lot. She feels something strange and gets frustrated. Luckily, a woman notices her and accompanies her. Meanwhile, Michael also becomes anxious in the restaurant, and his colleagues are shocked and concerned about him, so they try to calm him down. Later, their symptoms are followed by extreme hunger. The woman gets shocked as Susan suddenly eats the flower she's holding. Moments later, the people in the restaurant and the world turn into a frenzy as they become insanely hungry and eat like zombies. They almost eat everything around them, even inedible things. All of a sudden, people come to their senses and get shocked and disgusted once they realize what they just did. After that, they lose their sense of taste, but there's still no name for the disease. Meanwhile, Susan waits outside Michael's house. Then they worriedly talk about what may happen next after losing their sense of smell and taste. But Susan is hopeful that other senses may be alright since the sense of smell and taste are related. So they enjoy their company and savor the moment by satisfying their libido and enjoying their remaining sensations. In the morning, Michael wakes up without Susan beside him. He sees her standing by a window, looking at people who keep moving with their lives. They accept that their sense of smell and taste is gone, and there is a chance that sooner or later they may lose their other senses too. So they decide to keep going and proceed with life as usual. After that, Michael comes across his colleague hopelessly drinking alcohol outside the restaurant. So Michael motivates him that life must go on, and people will soon come back and eat at the restaurant. Subsequently, people around the world have accepted the new normal. They continue to accept the situation, keep moving with life, and do the things they usually did before. Then Michael works hard to create a new recipe and menu that will suit the loss of taste by taking advantage of his sense of touch and hearing. So later, the restaurant gains customers again. Meanwhile, Susan and Michael's relationship grows stronger, and they mostly spend their time together. Later, Susan asks Michael to play a game of telling their secrets. Susan confesses that she is infertile, and she cannot have her own baby in the future due to her ovarian issues. Michael then opens up about his ex-girlfriend, who had a severe disease, and he abandoned her until she died. He feels guilty about it, so he does not sleep with other women until he meets Susan. After that, they become closer and develop their relationship as they fully accept themselves. Soon after, Susan and her colleagues discover a new outbreak in Thailand called Severe Hearing Loss Syndrome. A scientist in Thailand explains that it is accompanied by anger, rage, and hate, followed by being deaf. But suddenly, the scientist suffers from hearing loss and gets frustrated. The syndrome spreads worldwide. People lose their temper, and everything becomes chaotic. Since the situation is becoming worse, quarantine protocols have been implemented. Susan's building is sealed, since there is an infected person in the building, while the restaurant where Michael works is advised to shut down. Then the authority offers Michael and his colleagues to work and cook for supplies during the lockdown, which they accept. Later, as Susan goes home, she worriedly sees her building is under lockdown, so Michael offers her his apartment and she decides to move in with him. While driving, Susan stops and opens the window. They listen to the announcement that they must stay away from people who show aggression symptoms. After that, they arrive at Michael's home. While Susan delightfully hugs him in the kitchen, Michael turns around and suddenly becomes tempered and starts to insult her and her smelly part. Michael continuously becomes aggressive and breaks everything in the house. So Susan frighteningly leaves the house. Susan drives away. On the road, she witnesses people getting aggressive. At the same time, Michael returns to his senses, but shockingly realizes he has lost his sense of hearing. The health workers arrive in front of his house, warning those who suffer from sudden death to stay at home. They then force him to go inside. Later, Susan arrives at her abandoned workplace and comes across her colleague. She tries to communicate with him, but he cannot hear. Then Susan receives a call from Michael, apologizing for what he did. He blames the disease for it, which makes Susan mad. She's still disappointed and throws her mobile, while Michael emotionally speaks through the phone. She then becomes frustrated and angrily throws things around her. After the rage, Susan wakes up hearing nothing. Michael sneaks out of his apartment and goes to the restaurant. He sees his colleague sleeping, who also lost his hearing, so they communicate through gestures. Susan is with her sister at home. She tells her that she's right about Michael, that he is also a jerk. Her sister comforts her. The streets are messy as some people have turned to become robbers, and some carry on with their lives and are optimistic that life must go on. Over time, they have learned to communicate through sign language. Later, the restaurant where Michael is working reopens, and they now serve creative and enticing dishes as a new way to attract more customers. Subsequently, Susan gets back to work and tries to forget about Michael. Afterward, people start to prepare for the worst scenarios, as they expect soon they will lose their other senses. Some people practice walking blindfolded, and some of them enjoy reading their favorite books and treasure the moment as they play with their friends and family members. 
On the other side, Michael is still brokenhearted. He gets drunk and goes outside Susan's apartment, hoping to meet her and apologize in person. Later, the world faces another adversity as the temperature slowly drops and glaciers gradually spread, which kills some creatures. One day, Michael suddenly wakes up feeling joyful. Then everyone begins feeling elated, and they embrace one another in happiness. Around the world, people suddenly feel the urge to celebrate and appreciate one another, and they develop a strong attachment. Subsequently, Susan realizes she still loves Michael, and they both rush to see each other. Susan excitedly drives to the restaurant and looks for Michael, but he's not there. At the same time, Michael rushes to Susan's apartment. Unfortunately from Susan's room, he sees her outside the restaurant. He tries to get her attention from the apartment's window, but she does not notice it. Michael hurries outside and feels downhearted as he stands on the street. Luckily, when Susan is about to leave, she notices him standing, so she stops and they finally meet. In the end, just when they finally embrace each other, everything turns dark all of a sudden. But Michael and Susan cherish the moment. They passionately touch each other and wrestle their tongues and muscles. After the feeling of euphoria, everyone becomes blind. With no sense of smell, taste, hearing, and sight, what is left is their sense of touch, implying that it is what the title indicates as the perfect sense. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.